So we open a new model wizard where we will select our space that we will be working with. Working with the 3D space dimension, we select 3D. Then we go ahead to select our physics. We'll be dealing with electrics, electric currents, go to electric fields, select electric currents, and go ahead to add, move to our steady. We'll be dealing with stationary steady. So click then to add our stationary study. So it brings us to our um, console interface. We go ahead to add our geometry cylinder where the radius will be 0 0.5. And our height will be one. Move this. this will be our height. This will be our geometry, as you can see. So that builds our the geometry for our model, our work today. So we can quickly add the blank material. To our work. And we want to define the electrical conductivity, the value for the electrical conductivity, the value for this as well. Look at the electric currents. Then we can add the ground to our work. The ground should be here. That will be the ground. And go ahead to add terminal. Terminal should be at the be at the top. So we add terminal to be four. It has to be four. I want to select four for terminal.
So we made the ground, we selected three for our ground and that was the terminal. One select. Question, because where I want to select, doesn't want to highlight. Let me choose all boundaries and all domains. Okay, it's not allowing me to select. It. Let me we add the terminal. Okay. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll first add first add the terminal before add the ground. Terminal. So I'll first add the terminal before I add the ground. So basically that is that, add the terminal, the ground. The terminal is for four and the ground is three. Then I go to mesh, use the physics control down to build or So I like to, we can compute now, the computers work now to see results. Okay. Okay. So let me add initial current. So we we'll have current running to the terminal because there's no current. Initially it was zero, that's why we have our results this way. It's supposed to have see the distribution of the current from the terminal to the ground. 
So I'll go ahead to compute it. Then now we see the distribution of the current from the terminal to the ground. So as you can see, the distribution of the current from terminal to the ground. So now we go to electric potential, voltage size, then we want to add. Okay, let's delete this. Then let's let's add the surface instead. And we put in the expression to be V, this unit is V. So we plot and as you can see, the electric potential from the terminal to the ground, go to derived values. We want to add global evaluation to our work and Go to the expressions, go to electric current, terminals. Let's see the resistance for it. Want to find the resistance distribution and evaluate it. We'll get the value for it down here. We should evaluate the resistance. If we should also go and let's say we want to evaluate the voltage, we have this the resistance and the terminal voltage in here. What's the derived? Let's say we want to add a volume integration. Let's evaluate the volume integration of this. So for the expression, what are we going to use? Let's go to electric current. Let's use the heating and loss. Go to volumetric loss density. And let's evaluate that. We could also change the expression. We can look at different expressions depending on what we want to evaluate. So we go ahead to evaluate and we have our results here. So that is the volumetric loss density. If we should, for instance, go here. We want to evaluate the energy density as well. Evaluate and we have the energy density as well. So basically, this brings us to the end of this simple, sh very short tutorial the electric potential from the terminal to the ground and being how you'll be able to evaluate certain results. So I hope you're able to follow to the end. So in here, what I did was I added the terminal first before the ground. The terminal was chosen to be four and the ground is one. And what I did was added the current. So let's say we want to make the current, uh, or let's say we want to add a time dependent steady. Maybe you can add a time dependent steady. We add a steady. Let's say we want to make it time dependent. So we can make it over a range. Let's say. Start at zero, let's see steps you can. Okay. Mm, let's say two. 
Okay, let's see. You want to make it five? Sorry. Can go ahead and study this and view this. So I think it's because of the time range that I use because it's, it's, it's the time range is quite a lot used about two to the power five. So to take a lot of time to compute because of the range that we are looking at. So this is for the time dependent steady. The one we did earlier was for stationary. So you just add a time dependent steady, then you just go about it. If you want to add a frequency de domain dependent, you add the frequency domain and you go about it easily. So it's, it's quite simple, straightforward using this 2D model. So this for generating heat and using stationary and time dependence and also checking the resistive and dielectric losses. In a 2D model. Oh, okay, so this will take some few minutes to compute. So we can be done. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, almost. Okay. Okay. 